Thanks for staying with us. This is still 21 Minutes with KKB and today we are having a conversation with a number of students who are not in their home countries. Um, for some, they are saying, well, uh, there's war. Why are you still outside the country? You must find a way and get back home. Others are saying, hey, <laughs> come back home. <laughs> for what? <laughs> Do you know what's happening here? <laughs> anyway, I don't know. But today we decided to tell a story about what is happening in Russia, a country which is on a collision course with its uh, neighboring country, Ukraine. And we want to test the waters and find out from our colleagues who are there, who are there to study. Uh, but uh, for some reason, unfortunately, I found themselves caught up in all of this. We have uh, three people uh, in Russia, all the way in Russia, several kilometers and miles away from here. And uh, due to technology, uh, they are able to join us for this conversation. So let me not say much. Let me quickly introduce my guests for today. Um, we have Helen Selom Wubui, who is a, uh, well, a Ghanaian based in Russia now. She's a student there. Um, Selom, thanks for joining us for this conversation. Um, we also have... Thank you. We also have a, a Nigerian. In fact, no, there are two Ghanaians. So let me finish with the Ghanaians and then we go to the Nigerians. There's another Ghanaian also based in uh, Russia who's joined us for this conversation. Kunde Festos Kasung uh, is also a Ghanaian uh, based in Russia. Kunde, uh, thank you for going to join, to join this conversation. We are really grateful. Thank you very much. And uh, Uzo Chuku. Uzo is from our, our neighbors, those we disciplined a few uh, days ago, weeks ago, you know. <laughs> Uzo, yeah. how are you doing? <laughs> I am good, thank you so much. Right, right, right. I'm, I'm, I'm doing well, I'm doing well, thank you. Let's start with you, Uzo. Uh, they say the last I'll also be the first, so you were the last person I introduced. Hopefully you're the first to give us an answer okay. as, to, as to why you are in, uh, first and foremost, who you are and why you find yourself in Moscow and not in Ibadan, Nigeria. <laughs> Okay, um, I came into Moscow uh, last year. Um, I'm a scholarship student in Moscow. Okay. So, um, okay. yeah, I came to study. Kunde, let me come to you. How, how is Russia like right now? What, what is happening in Russia? Even? As I speak to you uh -huh. and as I see uh, photos, in fact, from what I compare on the internet as to what is happening, around the borders and in Ukraine, Kiev and the like, I see a sharp contrast in Russia. I don't know if I'm right though, but you tell me, what, what is the situation like in Russia? Uh, I can only speak for where I am currently. Okay. Uh, I'm currently in Stavropol state, which is south of the Russian con uh, country itself. Okay. Uh, I would say everybody or everything is going normally as usual business as usual every everybody gets up go to work do whatever their daily tasks as uh as uh, you get them to do what those that are going to let's say school are going to school students are going to school i'm talking about even uh people that are like in the primary school like high school and stuff mm -hmm. people that are working are working restaurants are open uh Everything is basically normal. There are a few changes that I would say occurred after we heard about sanctions. Okay. But to as to the war or something, I would say there's nothing like that going on here. Okay. Because we see photos from the internet. People send us photos from Ghana. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, what is Putin doing? 
why why is he just causing this problem? Are you even safe over there? What's happening? I'm like, everything is normal. I just came back from class maybe two hours ago. Okay. I'm preparing for my tax so that I can study a bit for tomorrow as well. Everything is as usual as it's, it's supposed to be. The few changes that I could say has occurred are uh, no, we'll, we'll, come to, we'll come to the sanctions and the effect it's having on uh, those of you who are there now. We'll come there. We'll come to that in a bit. But I just wanted to have a fair idea what the situation was on the ground. And I think you've given me a very, very good account of that. Thank you for that. Uzo, Uzo. Uh, uh, on Niger people know they worry you say, come back house now. Mata go fi up in where you did. Are your, are your people, people not, not overly worried, worried about you living in a country uh, which is on, on the collision with another country? I wasn't worried initially when the crisis started because um, then Russia was still calm and Russia is still calm. But uh, you no, know, people are calm and from the, um, the projection on the news and everything. So everybody started panicking and my family started calling and not just like every other person. So calling, they were worried. My mom kept calling, my dad kept calling, everybody kept calling, when are you coming back, when are you coming back, are you not making plans to leave and all of that. But to me, I kept standing that nothing is going on. Every Everything is calm here, everything is almost normal. The, the, the economy, everything, people are going about their business and all of that, that everything is fine, that uh, the whole thing is happening is in Ukraine. So of course, everyone was uh, worried about the whole situation and wanted me back. Okay, uh, but personally, are you worried about what is going on to the extent that you would want to go back home? Um, of course, um, it's normal to get worried, you know. Yeah. It's normal to get worried, but um, given that um, Russia is still calm, everywhere, um, it's still safe for now. Everyone, everyone is going about their business. So um, I don't think... Uh, I can take any decision right now. So that doesn't mean that I haven't uh, made research on how to leave or where to go to or something like that. But I didn't think about like going back home or something like that. Should your government say, you know what, we are making it uh, possible for any Nigerian citizen based in Russia who wants to come back home for whichever reason, we are making it possible for you to get on a private jet and come home. Would you come back? It depends on the situation of things, you know. It depends on what? <laughs> it, depends, it depends on the on the situation of things, you know. If it's something that I can't handle, like it's beyond uh, something that I can handle by myself. No, so so then okay. Now we are going into we are going into hy hypotheticals. Let's take a look at now as things stand now in Russia. Given the yeah. chance to come back home, Nigeria, would you? take that opportunity of course i won't you won't yeah i won't really why not you're not scared that anything can happen to you <laughs> no <laughs> anything happening to me means that i mean um that should be when the real club board board just like everyone has been shouted all, all along that should be when something like that is happening you know wow. when it happens you get to something much more than you know everyone can handle but given the current situation for the fact that russia is still calm you can still go about your business um you know and leave so i don't think there is a particular opportunity to go back home you know i have something going on here with me so i can Salam, how about you uh, given the chance would you come back home or you still think Russia is a better option to Ghana anyway. Of course, we are even Ghanaians are suffering now and they are crying. But anyway, let me let me not be biased in asking this question. So <laughs> give me the chance would you come back home? <laughs> uh you mean now? Yes, now, 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 today, today, no, today. If, no, if now, no, I don't think I want to come back. You don't think you want to come because, back? Yeah. I think even now, uh, Russia is still safer mm. than yeah. Coming to Ghana, yeah. Since I came to Russia, like I, I felt so safe. Um, let's talk about the weather. Oh, the rain and all that. Yes, the weather is very good for your skin. Yeah. Uh, aside from that, 
you don't hear robbery cases. You can walk, like go out and come back at 12 a.m., walk around, nobody attacks you, like in Ghana. You go to church and you're even coming back at 6.30 p.m. and you are scared that someone will just catch you, slap you, and take your phone and all that. So yeah, I, I still think Russia is a better, better option than right. coming back right. to Ghana or going to Nigeria, yeah. where Jolot is going to be nice. That's an interesting one. <laughs> That's an interesting one. Okay, uh, let, let me hear from Festus. Festus, let's take a look at some of the things happening in Russia now. Taking a look at the sanctions and the effects, your, the, the ruble has lost uh, value by, uh, I think, close to about 50% of so. Uh, there's, there's an issue also when it comes to, in fact, we're reading about shortage of items at, at a point in time that uh, even in, in some of the uh, marts around, there were no toilet paper, there, there was, you know, short, shortage of goods and the like. Uh, today, in fact, uh, some weeks ago, we were told a number of companies had decided to pull out and not work in Russia. Uh, food companies, beverage companies and the like. Netflix announced same. Today, I was reading a report on that which suggested, well, it's having a bit of an impact on Netflix and the like. Um, how much of a challenge are these things, these sanctions? How much of a problem is that being for you, those of you who are there now studying or, you know, applying your trade or whatever? Uh, I would say that, uh, in a way, some of the information that we're given are true and some of them are having experienced them or heard of them anywhere in Russia here. Okay. With a shortage of some stuff, yes, there were instances or uh, information that we have about commodities like sugar yeah. being scarce because people were like buying them in bulk and putting them away thinking if in case this is supposed to go south yeah. uh, they are preparing themselves it's like so you know when you watch uh, when you watch american movies people like uh start to like pack up their bunker to get all the foodstuffs just right. in case anything happens. So that is what was causing a uh, scarcity of some commodities. But with like tea row and stuff, I never had anything. But uh, what the sanction has probably done is because of this, uh, prices of stuff has increased okay. uh, at the, at the uh, supermarkets. Is it because, of because you, the value of the ruble has fallen? Uh, the ruble has quickly gained back everything. I would okay. say, because uh, as at, before the ruble was, uh, or before the sanctions, I would say, let's say, uh, one, one dollar was around uh, 70 to 75,000 rubles. So, uh, sorry, hundred dollars was 7,500 uh, 7, rubles. And it's, after the sanctions hit, uh, it went to almost, 105 mm. but now it's even 71 so it's even getting very like it's even going so down that but you know i think when uh the president of the country russia here said he was prepared for sanctions i think he wasn't really bluffing mm. so the ruble he has he has regained whatever though it, it didn't really have higher value like that in the first place, but at least it has come back to when it, how it was before the sanction. So meaning he's still doing something right with that. Mm. So, yeah. How about the situation where we are told, for instance, that um, international banks have cut ties with Russia. Uh, all these major transfer platforms have cut ties. Should you, be dependent on, say, uh, resources from, say, family members outside of Russia. And you now find yourself in a situation where um, these ties have been cut, these financial uh, controls have been put in place so much so you can't get money. Um, what then happens? How are you able to survive? So let's say you have residents in Ghana who want to send you money. How are they able to send you money? Yes, that is one of the biggest problem uh, or challenges we have here. But I think uh, the National uh, Union of Ghanaian Students already have a platform set up in place. I don't know whether 
the pre thought of stuff like this happening. So it's like a, a money transfer application that uh, when your folks or something wants to send you money from Ghana or something, they send it to a specific number and I don't know how they, you get the the equivalent in rubles, just a little bit uh, reduced. You know, they need to make money. We need to make money off of okay. the transactions and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think uh, with this particular banks pulling out and stuff, it is it has caused an, an economic uh, strike on the country, definitely. Because uh, as a scholarship student, uh, the embassy right now is finding some difficulties on how to even transfer funds to scholarship students. Right. Uh -huh. Because uh, now, the, even if uh, you are supposed to be paid, let's say in dollars, mm -hmm. if you are being paid in dollars, the banks don't allow you to withdraw your monies in dollars. You are allowed to withdraw the amount in rubles as at the current equivalent on that particular day you want to withdraw. So meaning, uh, let's say if, uh, for instance, I have a $500 in my account now. Mm -hmm. If I go to withdraw $500, I wouldn't get $500 in, uh, like in its natural state, which is the dollar. I would be given rubles at, let's say, that particular current rate for that day. Let's say either rate is 80 or let's say 70, they'll give you. You know, the buying rate is definitely different from the like the selling rate, right? So uh, let's say they'll give you the buying rate for 70. And that means $500 will be times by that 70. Yeah. So now, if I want to now get dollars itself, I would have to now spend more to buy the actual dollar or the physical dollar itself. So meaning, therefore, um, my money has been devalued. Right. So if, let's say, $500 gave me 70,000 rubles, but now I want to buy $500 itself. I might have to add up almost 10,000 rubles to be able to get the dollars itself. So I think these are the stuff of or the system they have put, put in place to actually make sure the money comes back to its normal state. And now there's no, banks don't give you even the dollar. So this dollar I'm trying to see you want to get you might have to get it from the black market or something. Okay. Okay. The bank itself will not give you actual fiscal dollar, even if you want you come to buy it at a selling rate. Mm. They can only say we can give you the dollar in your account. Meaning, right. if I buy the dollar, they will give it to me in my account. And if I want to withdraw it back, I it gets devalued again. Right. So then what will be the essence of me buying that dollar? Exactly. So people are now arranging from that particular type of right. transaction. So right. that is that is affecting a lot of people here. So let's say if private students are to receive money now, that is the only option. And they have other, uh, other students or other people that are also into this business as in getting you the money or getting the money in your country, in Nigeria, and uh, let's say converting that amount for you in in rubles here. There's a Nigerian guy who is currently like doing that. He's called uh, Wakanda Forex or something. So hey. he, he has been helping Nigerian students with- Wakanda, if, Wakanda in Russia? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's doing, he's doing business here. So okay. if you give him uh, Naira, he will now give you, uh, what is it called? Rubles. rubles. Right. Yes. So I think the conversion or the best rate or the best thing they are doing to get this particular money back here is uh, cryptocurrency. Oh. So this sanction is definitely boosting Russia on the cryptocurrency market. They are now building systems and everything in place that after the sanction goes away, I'm sure they might be the kings of cryptocurrency and all those things because now, uh, let's say if I have an account in Ghana, right, and I want to do this business, mm -hmm. I need to have uh, rubles here as well to be able to give the person that equivalent in rubles. Yeah. So after then, how then do I now get that money that is in my account in Ghana? Because I can't just go to the ATM and withdraw it. Mm -hmm. So what I can now do is 
I will now use that money in Ghana to buy cryptocurrency. And I'm hearing the current stable cryptocurrency is uh, USDT. Can you hear me, please? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Right. Yes. I'm now hearing the current stable uh, cryptocurrency is USDT. So I'll now let's say buy USDT and now sell that USDT to somebody here in Russia. And that person will now give me rubles. So basically, I've converted that money back from the Ghana cities into cryptocurrency. Right. And right. now converted this cryptocurrency back into the the uh the rubles. The the currency they are using here. Yeah. So that is now the transaction or how people are now getting, let's say, funds from outside mm -hmm. Russia. I see. That's a that's a good one. That's a good one. Let me come to the ladies, right? Uh, I'll try and uh, finish with uh, the ladies, and then come back to you, Uzo. For uh, no, I mean, uh, first was for a quick a quick wrap of this. Um, I think maybe we should start with Selma. Selma, how? Well, you have studied in Ghana all these years. You now find yourself in a different environment, uh, un unfamiliar territory, and the like. Uh, how would you say the experience has been? How long have you been in Russia, though? Oh, since uh, December. Okay, so uh, that's roughly six months there, about five, six months there, about. Okay. Not really, like four months. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So, how has the experience been for you, especially? And uh, what are your plans? Should your should your um how do we call it your uh, program of study be over what are your plans uzo i'll be coming to you next with a similar question so begin to think of it and i just put the weight okay so i started this um program in 2020 and uh, so i was in ghana and i was doing it online due to the coronavirus uh, travel restrictions so i couldn't come to russia mm -hmm. immediately so i had to stay back in ghana and do it online but yeah even studying online uh, in russia has been very insightful uh, though it's tedious because of the curriculum but okay. it, yeah it's been very insightful uh, because my courses my program is a research program and then when I came here, yeah, uh, I had little to do. I was done with coursework in December. So I don't have classes. I'm only doing, I did my internship recently. And then I also, I'm now working on my thesis. Yeah, so, and then I'll be defending that in uh, June. I'll be done in June. Yeah, so when I'm done, I intend to further my education, maybe get a PhD, even if it's not immediately, I'll just get a job and also be working towards it. So, returning home is out of the picture. Great. Understood. Uzo, how about you? Um, how has the experience been for you? And, and um, in fact, before that, uh, I had a lengthy conversation with Festus about the impact of these sanctions and he's given us his perspective on that. For you, uh, let's okay. say primarily you were there to school and the like. How has how have all of these impacts uh, affected education for you? Um, with the sanctions, um, yes, it's actually, it's not just affecting just me; it's affecting like everybody, every student, mm. and lecturers as well. Because you know, you, uh, you can't publish your work. You know, as a Russian, you can't um, um, publish your work currently. And secondly, Coursera, even if you want to take um, some courses, because most times uh, I go to Coursera to, you know, um, register for some courses and all of that. You know, some websites are down because we don't have access to those web websites anymore. And uh, these websites are as well helpful for research and all of that. So given the current situation of things right now, it's actually going to be difficult um, right. with um, trying to do your research work, um, back up uh, your studies and all of that is actually going to be tough. Yeah. You know, unlike before that, everything was made easier. 
like for instance, as a research um, person, um, what's this website again? I'm trying to remember the name that you can't use anymore, the name of the website for research tool or something. I can't, I can't really remember the name of, of this website, but you know, you can't have access to them anymore for your research. So that is it. I see. Okay. Now let's look at your experiences um, and whether or not you are willing to return to Nigeria. Baba, they wait now. Uh, after your <laughs> program. <laughs> Um, after my program, I don't have any plans of going back to Nigeria. Um, oh, really? What? Why my plans? <laughs> Actually, all my plans are uh, I'm working towards, you know, um, evolving, getting better life, and all of that. Which I don't see myself having such privileges in Nigeria because I mean, um, after my graduation, I know that I, I it was like tough for me. And not just me. In fact, life after school, like I always say, life after school in Nigeria is always a tough one. You know, you have to make um, tough decisions, you know, about your life and what you engage yourself with. So coming here um, is a stepping stone for me to, you know, to other um, opportunities, you know, better opportunities and all of that. So I don't think that um, after my studies here, I'll go back to Nigeria. The two things involved is either I further here in Russia or get a job, or I, you know, leave to somewhere else. So these are my plans. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I, I think I can understand you. First of all, how about you? Any interesting plans? Surprise me, because the two ladies have not surprised me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a medical student, so definitely I plan on going back to my country to actually serve, because the main reason I even wanted to do medicine was because of uh, what I think the country was lacking. I'm not saying I'm going to be the number one doctor in Ghana, definitely. But uh, I think uh, there are some things we can learn here that I think we can use to improve the system there. Right. That's why apart from going back to just work, uh, what we are doing or what I'm doing currently is trying to build myself a passive income uh, stream so that it wouldn't be like I'm going to depend on the salary mm -hmm in Ghana because I know that the salary in Ghana for doctors yeah in Ghana due to the economy and everything it looks like it is going to sustain you and stuff but when you can build your own passive income stream meaning you wouldn't even care really about the amount you are being paid over there at the end of the day it is going to be you enjoying working or serving the people yeah. so that is that is how I think it will work for me because if I'm to go and just depend on just the salary or something, I'm not sure because even people that are already in the system over there in Ghana are now doing other businesses. Mm -hmm. And nope, right nope. now, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right now I would say uh, there's there's money online. Mm. Yes, so if there's money online and you can build your own passive income which I'm already doing. That's why I'm, I, I, I still believe that, oh, I still want to go to Ghana. Unless maybe my final year, something changes. Else, uh, I, the plans on going back to Ghana to, to, to serve a bit, definitely, is, is, still, is still on. Or that's, why, that's why I said, unless something changes in my final right, year. Right, right, right. Yes. Okay, I mean, uh, uh, that, that makes a lot of sense. And, and I'm sure uh, all the experiences you've, and the knowledge you've gained there, uh, I'm sure you put it to a lot of great use and uh, make a lot more for yourself and for everyone around you. Um, today I said I wasn't going to make it long. I was going to keep it very short. And so let me thank you for your time. I know it's late wherever you are now. And so I'll, 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 I would like to thank you. Kunde uh, Festos Kasung, Uzo Chuku, and uh, Helen Selom. Uh, Helen Selom and uh, Kundu Festos are Ghanaians uh, who are based in Russia. Uh, they are having their education in Russia. They shared with us a lot of interesting things. Um, as for the other lady from Nigeria, uh, people are calling her, but she says she's not coming. <laughs> no matter what Putin puts in her, in her head. <laughs>
<laughs> she's not returning to nigeria anytime soon ladies and gentlemen i mean thank you thank you so much for your time on the show today it's really been a pleasure uh, having you and uh, those have been my guests on 21 minutes with kkb right here my name is kobna chenche hinebwati it's been a pretty interesting conversation you know uh, we are only hopeful that whatever situation um, is currently happening for which reason you know people on the other side of russia people around the borders people in ukraine people in kiev and the like are having to uh, endure a lot of pain and hurt we are hoping that that situation will come to a close soon enough and uh, citizens of russia citizens of ukraine citizens of other countries who find themselves in russia now uh, will be safe and sound and uh, will not have to suffer any any more than they already have um, i hope this interview has been enlightening um Apparently, most of the things that were out there in the media early on don't seem to be the case from our discussion with these three students in Russia. But of course, uh, we'll, we'll try and dig deeper into this conversation and get you some more. Uh, we have a build interview with uh, some students from Ukraine, which we'll be sharing with you also uh, in a short while. But for now, though, uh, again, my name is Kobna Chenchei. Many thanks for watching. I'll see you soon again, hopefully, with another guest you're expecting.